Hey, it's Sergio from Storyboard Art. How are you? What's going on? I'm here to talk about some more story tips. And today I kind of wanted to talk about tools and how to start with the digital storyboard setup. Now I get this question often, and I've done this kind of talk before, but I thought it'd be a good idea to do a little update because the tools change and there's a couple of new things that happen. But I think really in the end, what you want to do, just like any good artist, should be able to pick up any kind of tool and be able to do something with it. So any skilled artist should be able to use whatever is out there. Uh, but for those of you who are having any doubts and maybe you know you get hung up on what kind of software you should be using, what kind of setup you should be using, I'll, I'm gonna break it down for you with a couple different programs with many different options. So there's like paid options, there's free options, all that stuff is gonna be really easy uh, to figure out. So the first thing I guess what I wanna talk to you about is um, is kind of your, your hardware setup, right? So welcome to my studio. I'm joined with my, my trusty sidekick assistant, Richard the Cat. And uh, this is my Cintiq screen here. Let me just flip this around if you can, you can see it. Um, you know, it's, there's kind of a little bit of glare, but you can see this is a big giant monitor that, uh, that you can draw on, right? And I'll get into, uh, I'll share my screen in a second, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about the hardware in, in, at the beginning. So that comes with a little digital pen, and you're basically doing what you do traditionally on pencil or paper, you do that here with, um, with a digital setup. The other thing that you can do is use like an, an iPad, right? iPad Pro has been a huge uh, game changer when it comes to doing digital storyboards, especially with a program like Procreate. I know a lot of people who uh, swear by that. And of course, just like same thing, you get your, your Apple Pen and you can go ahead and, and draw on your iPad. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to mention too, there, there are a couple more options. Let me pull this one up. Uh, behind Richard here, we got, this is a, this is a Surface, Microsoft Surface Pro. Okay, so check this out. It's a really neat machine. And let me see if I can, you can see that. So it comes with like a cover and it's, it's really about the same size as an iPad. Maybe it's slightly, slightly larger. Let me pull this back so you can see it. <laughs> It's slightly larger than like, you know, it's about the size of an iPad Pro really. I'm sorry, wait, yeah, iPad Pro. So um, this is a Microsoft Surface and it's really slick because it also comes with a pen, right? And you can draw on it and it's a touchscreen surface. So the, the interesting and cool thing about this is it runs Windows. So the kind of, well, I don't know if it's an advantage or a disadvantage, but with, with you know, kind of the iOS, interface on on your iPad you can only run Apple Apple centric uh, applications and software there so that's where you know procreate or maybe like the Photoshop version for the iPad would work there with this one you can run a full Windows thing and it's really portable it's super slick and really nice you know you can pull off the keyboard right so it becomes like a tablet and this is just like you know the keyboard there and it's just a really nice lightweight machine. It's, you know, if you get, you know, there's different versions of it. So you get the fancy one. It's got like really nice processor and decent amount of RAM. Now uh, it's expensive. So that's, that's one of those things that I think, uh, you know, if you're gonna drop money on, you wanna consider, uh, and that's an alternative to actually, you know, buying one of these like super heavyweight monitors <laughs> with like the, the Wacom screen, right? So the, the, they're just different alternatives. Now, one thing that I mentioned to everybody out there, especially if you're starting out, is that you can get used versions of any of this stuff, right? You don't necessarily have to buy it brand new. There's so many, there's so many versions of these computers and hardware out there that people are looking to upgrade all the time. In fact, my Wacom desktop monitor is a couple years old, and these things are, are really well built. I've never had an issue with them. Let's like knock on wood, right? <laughs> then hopefully my thing's not going to blow up next week. But I have not had an issue with this so far. It's never broken down on me and never had to turn it in as like a warranty claim. So, uh, so they last a long time. So I think if you got a, a used version, you, you know, you get it somewhere reputable, you're able to check it out. You know, you can get a huge discount on like a Microsoft Surface. Um, you know, instead of paying like two grand for the, the brand new model, you could probably slash that in half or even more, like get, get something for around $500 or less. And you know, as long as it can run a 2D program like, like Photoshop, uh, you're good. That's all you need. It doesn't have to be that fancy. You don't need that much computer power to, uh, to create storyboards at the very beginning. If you're doing advanced stuff and you're getting into previs, you're doing a lot of rendering, you're doing a lot of like camera moves and video editing, 
then that's where you probably need a little bit more uh, a beefy desktop computer. Or, you know, if you get a, a decent Surface Pro, that'd be great. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for your iPad because, you know, again, it's just not built for doing those high-end, uh, you know, video editing and, and advanced pre stuff, 3D uh, applications. Although, you know, it's, it's getting better and better every year. So uh, there's a lot of that. All right, let me go into uh, this. Uh, this is Photoshop. All right, you guys know this, but I've shown you this. Like the first thing you want to do is, is basically, uh, you know, use a template when you're when you're starting with it. You know, at the very least, you, you want to have a frame when it comes to when it comes to your your storyboard panel. So I have a couple of notes here um, when it comes to my my actual um, when it comes to my my actual template. That's why it says crop final images to sixteen by nine. Uh, template. Okay, so this is this is just one way to, to to start off, which I think is just a a good way to get going. Now, this is 16 by 9. It's your standard aspect ratio. If you don't know what that means, you can check out our website. We got a lot of information on when it comes down to um, why a particular frame is more rectangular or more more uh, more square or more rectangular than others. Okay, but just know that 16 by 9. It's about the aspect ratio of your phone most widescreen TVs, and this is what most people are storyboarding in, in the, the 16 by nine. It's very common nowadays, okay? Here, of course, what you wanna do is just work in layers, and you can start adding layers onto this stuff so that it's creating, um, it's, it's creating a, an environment where you can start iterating and making things happen in your, in your storyboard template, okay? And you definitely wanna keep that, that frame on here so that when you're drawing, that you're not actually um, you're not actually drawing on this stuff. So let me go here, and I'll show you what I mean. So like I can I can scribble as much as I want, and if th this frame layer is not going to get uh, interrupted by by that, it's always on top. So essentially, the drawing underneath is something there, and you can go ahead and adjust that as much as you want. Whoops, I'm on the wrong layer here. I can you know these scribbles, I can put them in here within the frame and compose them. So imagine you're you're drawing a, an actual figure or some kind of composition with objects that you can move them around and that frame is what, what guides you. It's basically solid there. So now I don't want to get too much into the actual uh, construction of a storyboard panel. I kind of more want to focus on tools today. We can talk a little bit about other stuff later, but in setting up Photoshop, now for those of you who may not be so familiar with this stuff, uh, I start with Photoshop because it's basically the foundation for a lot of other programs that use this kind of stuff. Uh, you'll notice at the bottom here, this, is, this has a timeline feature where you can actually bring in sequential images and start working. Now that's a little more advanced trick, but the, the, just know that you can do that and you can create storyboards in a sequential way inside of Photoshop now. And that's really, really cool. A couple things to note is I've rearranged my menus and put everything kind of on a, on a right hand side because I'm right handed and I like to be able to just click everything here. A uh, couple of of quick set things that I do is is here uh, there's an actions menu now this is a really important thing now if you see my video of how to set up Photoshop for storyboards you know that I use this a lot and you can actually download my actions go check out YouTube and check out that video I have it's uh, it, it's pretty pretty um, straightforward on how you actually set things up but one of these cool features is that you can set this to a button mode so it becomes really easy to manipulate this stuff. So let's see if I can show this. So this one, by clicking on that button, you notice it in that, that white, uh, that white little sketchy doodle that I made turned to a blue line. So let me, let me go ahead and, and show you that, all right? Now there's, there's a bunch of different, <coughs> excuse me, there's a bunch of different actions that take place to make that happen, and that's all recorded here. And, and in fact, uh, if I go back to, to, the, to the button mode, you can see everything that it does uh, under that, right? So I've set this up beforehand, but just know you can create these macros and kind of shorthand tricks inside of Photoshop to set it all up and, and make it easier to use, right? And that's really what you want to do there uh, in, in doing Photoshop. So another thing that you, that you want to get at, which is really important, is this workspace feature. If you go up, you, you notice I have my Sergio workspace. <laughs> this is basically what I've set up, and, and that's having pushing all of my menus to the right over here and, and making that, that work, okay? So other things that I like to use are these swatches. Now, you'll notice here that I've, I basically, now 
I've reduced this down a lot because Photoshop gives you like hundreds of colors and all kinds of grayscales. I just made this very basic. So here, what I can do is just click this and if I'm using my brush tool, uh, let me go in and make sure I'm on, I'm on the right uh, layer here. Uh, yeah, this'll do it. So if I go in here and, and now I can change colors really quickly and that way, you know, you, it's just a matter of clicking to actually do this. Now that, you know, sorry, I'm just scribbling over something. It may not look that clear, but just know that by, by clicking on this, it's super fast to change colors and you actually don't have to do anything that special to make it work, right? And then if I wanted, let me switch back to button mode and then I'll go ahead and erase all that. See, bing, it's all gone <laughs> with just a, a click. Like I don't have to, uh, you know, there's many ways to delete something in Photoshop, but I've, I've created just a, a shorthand button to do that. Okay, so those are just some of the tricks to setting up Photoshop. Now let me go into another program that's super popular, which is Toon Boom. Uh, now you'll notice that things look very similar. If you've never even looked at this program before, now this is a professional storyboarding software that uh, has a lot of really cool tools with it, especially this timeline feature here. And there's different arrangements to how you set up your, your working environment. In fact, that whole workspace idea when I showed you different uh, workspaces, you'll notice that it has a couple of different ways. If I click on that, it's going to refresh and go through this whole way of doing something new. And let me go this, let me click on this one, which is going to go back to a different method of, it's like whether you're using a thumbnail view or, or if you're using like a, you know, just like a different layout. I like to use this timeline view and like basically draw, draw my storyboard panel and, um, inside this timeline view. And what you'll notice is that as I'm, you know, if I'm building this up, let's say there's some kind of mountain range here and, um, you know, I got like a sun and maybe a tree, you know, I'll just scribble this, this stuff in here. And then, uh, you know, if I, if I right click, I can add a new panel. That's one way to add it. And you'll notice that these are grouped within different, uh, they call them scenes inside of Toon Boom. And I can create a new scene, which now uh, degroups it and, and it creates a different section. Now this becomes important when you're actually doing uh, an animatic. And then once I do that, I can actually play this. So in a way you're, you're kind of creating your storyboards and prepping them already for an animatic. And you can time this out by extending this as much as you want. So this is just another cool way to do it. The same things go here that I have different brushes set up. You know, I can like quickly click on this and you know, it creates like a thinner line versus a thicker line. And I think I have even bigger ones here. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of like basic tools. I, I think I just you know, kind of kept the default for most of these things. So that's, that's really what I do. And then you'll notice that I, I have my same like gamut of swatches. So I can go from a series of grays to a couple colors here. And I just quickly switch back and forth from these things. There are just a couple of shortcut tricks in there. Now this, this program can get really deep and complicated. You can even bring in 3D assets and start doing kind of uh, sophisticated two and a half D camera moves within this program. And, and you can do a lot with it. It looks really, really cool. The results that you get, you export individual uh, frames or you export a movie file that you can now create uh, or further edit an animatic. You can pretty much create a, a really complete animatic in here. You can even bring in uh, temp sound or temp uh, uh, dialogue and you can bring in uh, different uh, dialogue clips here in this like timeline feature okay now I don't want you to get too freaked out by the amount of tools and like like options you have with this because you're just gonna go crazy the the, the most basic thing you want to do when you're getting started is open up the program click around the buttons as if as if you're not afraid to break it okay because I think most people when you're opening up a software, it's like, oh, I, I get so deep into it and I get lost and I can't get back to the same basic thing. I think any program, even like Photoshop, you can, there's a way to like reset your, your workspaces and like it'll go back to the default here and extensions, uh, you know, 3D and, and all of that, like reset the workspace. There's ways to do it so that if you click around too many things or if you move menus around, it's really not that hard to get back to your basic thing. Um, and most of the time they follow the same format. A lot of your options are going to be up to the front with the menu bar, of course. And then your, your file formats and your importing happens when you, when you bring in your files. And a, and a program like Photoshop and also Toon Boom 
you could import a lot of files. So like here, uh, let me bring in this one, uh, images as scenes. L look at all the file formats that you can actually bring in here. Bring in here, and I've done this a lot. I've brought in a lot of JPEG files, uh, even Photoshop files, and I think it'll it'll conserve some of your layer information there when you do that. So the, a lot of these programs talk back and forth, which which didn't used to be the case <laughs> when you're doing that. So that's a really cool feature. Okay. Now let me get to, to let me get one more thing that's that's pretty basic. I'm going to open up my my go-to demo software, which is which is Sketchbook, and this used to be free. They had a free version on it. It's no longer free, but this is like the most basic you can get uh, with uh, a a like storyboarding tool. It has your layers here, which I really like, and the reason I, I I'm like I'm I'm a big fan of this program. It's just so simple that you really can't go wrong with a lot of these things. And it, it really reduces the, uh, that temptation to start clicking around the buttons and actually getting so deep into the technology and the setup of the digital tools that you forget about the content that you're trying to do, okay? So that's something where you, you really always wanna be in, just engaged with the actual purpose of what you're doing, the emotional response of your storyboard, and that after a while you forget about the tools. Your setup is so smooth and that you've, you're familiar with it enough that you're able to actually create artwork, that you're able to create a story, okay? That's really the most important thing. So what's important about this software is that it's got your basic tools here, and again, I just have a basic brush that I use all the time, and, and then you know I can draw whatever I want. It's got pressure sensitivity, which is really nice. And it feels really good, and it's really fast. And again, you can export this into whatever formats you want. Um, like for example, save as, and I'll, I'll bring this up. Most of the time, like TIFF and Photoshop file, I'll, I'll save this out in a Photoshop file, which will conserve all the layers. And if I need to do something even more advanced that this program can't do, I'll bring that into Photoshop and just manipulate the layers even more, okay? so. This is just a quick overview of what kind of tools you can use to get started. Now, there are other free options out there, which is really great. Uh, you might wanna check out Storyboarder, which is another program that, that's really slick and, and I think it's still available for free. And there's also Blender, which is a 3D program that it's, a, it's, it's not, for, not for the beginners out there. It's more, a little bit more advanced stuff because Blender is a 3D program that incorporates like a full set of 3D cameras and you're in a 3D engine. So if you play video games and that kind of thing, you might be familiar with that. And it also has a drawing tool aspect there, which you're actually drawing in 3D. You're drawing in image cards in, in 3D, which is fantastic because you can push those things in your 3D space and you create a really slick 2.5D um, approach to your drawings. Well, it's almost, it's, it's 3D, it's not 2.5D <laughs> at that point. I mean, it looks flat because you're actually making drawings, but the, the result is a very accurate representation of a camera in a program like Blender. And again, it takes some 3D knowledge, so that way, if you, if you wanna play around with that, give yourself enough time when it comes to starting out with these programs so you're not getting frustrated and you just throw the whole thing out. I'd rather you make progress with your storyboards and, and what you're doing than, than you know, getting frustrated with, with what it is that you're working on, okay? Does that, does that make sense? <laughs> now, a couple other things to, to keep in mind is that uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money on software to get started. If you have any doubt, I would download the trial version of any of these things. Toon <coughs> Excuse me. Toon Boom has a trial version that you can use and, and that works just fine. Try it out before you spend any money. And even the monthly subscription for these things is not gonna break your bank. I think if it's, if it's just Photoshop, uh, you can get a student version for, I think it's like less than $30 a month. I forgot what the pricing is. Uh, but uh, that's one thing to consider. If you sign up for our programs and you get membership on, on the stuff that, that we do, you do actually qualify for those student uh, discounts. So that's really great. In fact, I should mention this too, that we have also have a waiting list open for our Storyboard Artist Mentorship, which is gonna be happening in June. We're gonna open up registration for that. So if you guys are interested in there and learning more about this stuff where we go in depth with, with all of these things, in fact, we, we take it to the next level. We're really, um, really proud of the program that, that's developing there because from when we started this thing, we're really jumping this up and really transforming artists 
into professional storyboard artists. So they come in with some raw skills and then we really uh, give them the tools that they need to actually become uh, the artist that they've always wanted to be. And that's really, really exciting for me. I love seeing that transformation. So if that's something you're interested in and you want to get more information about it, uh, check out our website. We're going to put some announcements up there pretty shortly. All right, that's, that'll do it for me today. And thanks for, for checking this out. And again, if you have any other questions and you want to find out more about that stuff, go ahead and, and leave a comment on this video. And that would be really fun to see what you guys are into. And uh, hopefully what, what can give you traction in the industry. That's something that we're always really about to try and make sure that we're, we're hitting the mark when it comes to giving you the info to, to succeed. Now, why? Because you're going to make better stories out of this. You're going to have better results. And we all benefit by that, okay? The last thing I want to see is a really crappy story. <laughs> and I want to build story artists that are actually making good content. And if you can do that, there's, there's really no sense of competition there. It's really as good as you can be. And that's what we want is to really support you with that and make sure you're doing the best that you can. All right, keep that up. Leave a comment. If, hopefully you like this stuff and we'll keep it going. Okay, talk to you soon.